Pressure is growing on the federal government for a review of the nation's workplace laws. Businesses of all sizes, industry bodies and economists have told 7.30 the system lacks flexibility and they fear Julia Gillard's re-regulation of the industrial landscape could cause serious problems in another downturn. As Hayden Cooper reports, the Reserve Bank Governor says he's getting the same message. <laughs> It's Sunday afternoon and peak hour approaches at this bustling tea house in the nation's capital. It's the busiest day of the week. The band is in full swing. <laughs> Customers are settling in. And the staff have hit top gear. In the Japanese line? Yep. Oh, it's packed. Like, we serve up to, like, 150 people or something, like, in one sitting. But for the workers, it's busier than it used to be. This business was set up when there were no penalty rates on the weekend. Now there are. And meeting the extra cost means something has got to give. And the staff are doing more with less. There has been like a kind of a noticeable change in how many people are working and we've had to like cut back on like the longer shifts and less people working which has been a bit of a struggle because as you can tell it gets kind of busy so it's a bit hard. It's a story that's repeated in small and large businesses right across the country as employers complain of a system that's inflexible and costly. It hasn't worked at all. You know, I don't think it's... Um, it hasn't helped the client, it hasn't helped the employee, it hasn't helped the employer. It's just hurting the people that it's designed to help and it's ridiculous. When we saw the new IR laws a couple of years ago, we, we thought they were a throwback to the Keating era, but the more we get into it, we find it actually even goes back further than that to the 70s and 80s. So would you call your award modernisation program a success? It's been an outstanding success. So how long have you been in business here for? Uh, Dad started in 1966, so well, still going. Scott Norris employs 140 people at his four-decade-old cleaning business. And how do the, the workplace laws today compare with the old ones? Uh, since I've been here since 1990, um, working for Dad, and um, yeah, they've just progressively got um, more strict and less flexible. It's um, probably nothing as bad as they are now. They're certainly a lot worse now than they ever were. His complaints with Canberra's laws are varied, but the biggest change for his business under the new fair work regime means the manager can no longer offer a second shift to an employee without paying overtime. It's just got to the stage where we're just having to tell staff that they can't do extra work because we can't afford to pay them because the client's not going to pay overtime rates and, and the higher, higher rates. The higher cost of labour is putting a squeeze on the whole business and on the workers, some of whom are desperate for more hours, even at the standard rate. But with new employees, they work 7.6 hours maximum and we can't offer them any more. So they either go and work for somebody else uh, as a second engagement or they go hungry and there's really no... Uh, there's no real middle ground for them uh, within the one company. In of Australia. Industry awards were harmonised across the nation last year and it's now two years since Fair Work Australia was established by the then Minister and now Prime Minister. Your Honour, I have every confidence that Fair Work Australia will serve our nation fairly and effectively in the years to come. But is it fulfilling the promise? The current workplace minister believes it is. Do you concede that your workplace relations laws are causing real distress for many small businesses? I don't accept the general proposition. It is true that retail is doing it tough at the moment, and I know that's putting pressure on some small businesses. But I suppose I don't, under, under, um, I don't uh, accept the fundamental proposition that workers should have their take-home pay reduced as a solution to those problems. But it's not only small business that's complaining. The mining sector fears the return of union access is crippling productivity. 
and it worries that rising wages in some operations could filter through to others. We've got pockets in the industry where they've had 37% increases in the last 18 months. If you take offshore construction, for example, a barge welders on $498,000, a laundry hands on $423,000. Now, you compare that with a federal court judge or the prime minister who are on about $350,000. These have been pretty substantial wage increases. Enter the Reserve Bank Governor. In a climate of economic uncertainty, even he has now gone public, giving voice to some of these very concerns and suggesting a review of the laws might help. But what people do say, and you know, this, this is what they say to me, I can't verify it obviously from their individual businesses, is they find it harder to get flexibility. Uh, they find it harder to negotiate flexibility. That, that is something that is said. Uh, if that's true, then that, I think, is, is a matter for concern. No, we're not as flexible as we were. For many economists, the unsung hero of the global financial crisis was work choices, the system in place for much of the worldwide recession. Now, in the event of another downturn, the flexibility of the new system would be put to the test. Look, my personal view would be that the pendulum swung back too far. Uh, work choice has had its problems and, and changes needed to be made. Uh, for my money, we, we've probably tightened up on, on some of the flexibility that was there a bit too much. Uh, and that could be a problem if there's a renewed downturn uh, here, or more importantly, around the world with its impact here. Uh, and that's a big question. One scone, one raisin, one banana. Okay, and... Next year, the government will review the Fair Work Act, but workers and their bosses are being told not to expect widespread changes. Chris Evans says the system is flexible enough. So business have got to be flexible, employees have got to be flexible, but those provisions are in the Act, and some employers, quite frankly, just haven't taken up those opportunities. They haven't managed their business in a way to maximise those opportunities. But try telling that to the business owners who are grappling with the laws and, in some cases, struggling. Yeah, look, it does make it hard and it makes it um, unpalatable to run a business. And you know, the thought of walking away from it um, crosses our mind from time to time because you, you're just under so much pressure from everybody. As for the staff, it seems not everyone wants penalty rates if it means fewer hours as a trade-off. I think it's a bit unfair, really. I mean, paying someone $40, $50 to wash dishes for six hours, I think it's not quite justifiable. I'd much rather work more hours and get paid less. I didn't even know what I was on beforehand because I was just happy to come in and get some hours, so it didn't really affect me that much. But now it's sort of they have to be paying people extra to stay on, so now a few of us are sort of getting shifts cut, which is a bit annoying. Striking the right chord for all is virtually impossible. But the question remains, is this the best arrangement for the economic environment, the right tune for the times? On that... The audience is divided. Hayden Cooper with that report.